Um, question, what is our greatest underlying source of global catastrophic risk, existential risk, violence, war, oppression, other ethnic groups and species, low mood, social anxiety and clinical depression? Um, the answer, I'm going to say, is uh, Machiavellian apes, particular, uh, particularly uh, male Machiavellian apes. Um, why uh, male is this misplaced uh, political correctness? Um, no, I, I don't think so. It is if you look at uh, uh, history, uh, it has been uh, men who have been responsible for most of the world's wars, the Holocaust, uh, you know, uh, have uh, designed nuclear weapon systems. That's not to say that women can't be individually extremely unpleasant, scratchy to the size out, but uh, uh, yes, when I, I, I use the term uh, uh, male primates uh, especially. Um, and uh, yes, uh, uh, though uh, uh, part of the reason we have been so successful as a species has been so-called uh, autistic intelligence, it's responsible for much of uh, 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 the sciences and uh, scientific achievement. What seems to have uh, driven the evolution of distinctively human intelligence uh, has in part been our, our mind-reading capacities. Uh, we are uh, uh, Machiavellian apes. How are we going to uh, uh, combat what I would regard as uh, the greatest challenge uh, uh, we face? Uh, uh, as, as I said, uh, it is male Machiavellian apes who are responsible for killing last century uh, uh, tens of millions of people because they belong to a different species, who today uh, we kill perhaps 50 billion non-human uh, animals uh, of a different species. I'm going to argue that in the long run, the only way uh, to, uh, to, to, uh, to tackle the underlying problem of a genetic deficit of empathetic understanding uh, of biological solutions, and just as in the sciences we strive for a God-side view, a view, from, a view from nowhere, I'm going to argue we need to do exactly the same uh, in, in, in ethics. Um, James. Um, now, I think a lot of people uh, intuitively will think of James uh, and Endure as, as rather uh, faint and absurd. Uh, in the sanctity of life, the practice of Himsa, uh, no wars have ever been fought in the name of Jainism. <laughs> they are vegans, they walk their foot, they sweep the ground in front of them. Um, now, the idea that we should be anything like Jains uh, might seem absurd, but nonetheless, uh, a powerful case can be made that compared to our post-human successors, uh, we, should, we are akin uh, to small insects. And uh, why should our post-human successors care about us? Um, so yes, in one sense, I think we should be uh, Jains. Um, but to be effective, benevolence must be intelligent, rational, and systematic. What is the, uh, the future of, 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 of sentience? There's a famous uh, quote from Bernard Vigley that's still worth repeating. It seems plausible that with technology we can, in the fairly near future, create or become creatures who surpass humans in every intellectual and creative dimension. It begins beyond such an event, such a singularity, or as unimaginable to us as opera is to a flat one. Now, I'm actually going to argue that we have something extremely important uh, in common with uh, flat rooms, and not with stupid technology, please go away, help. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to occur, I'm convinced. Um, yes, we do have something in common with uh, flat rooms, and that's a uh, pleasure pain axis. Uh, phenomenal pleasure pain, it's ultimately why anything matters. If we were not sentient, uh, uh, if we did not have a ple pleasure pain axis, nothing would intrinsically matter. Now you can ask, well, I'm in agony, but does anything, does it really matter that I'm in agony? Uh, uh, well, we'll have to perhaps postpone that uh, to another day. Now, I'm not going to tackle in any depth here the, uh, the, the hard problem of consciousness, uh, why we aren't uh, 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 zombies, um, but I just uh, wanted uh, to, in this slide, just to uh, let you know that I'm aware of it. A definitional question, uh, what is friendliness? Um, uh, uh, now, 
I choose as an assumption uh, what uh, is enshrined in the transhumanist declaration is that it's a minimal, a minimum precondition of any advanced civilization. We advocate the well-being of all sentients, including humans, non-human animals, and any future artificial intellects, modified life forms, or other intelligences to which technological and scientific uh, advance may give rise. But what kind of well-being uh, and uh, many, many different kinds of, 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 of well-being, how far am I from the zero? Um, and in addition, very difficult questions about what to do about predators, uh, human and non-human, sociopaths, malevolent agents. Um, but what I would say, whatever solution we come to, is that ultimately we should be striving uh, for a God's eye view. Uh, should we aim for merely human-friendly superintelligence, i.e. to lock in the anthropocentric bias, or should we aspire to sentience-friendly superintelligence? Um, and yes, I think we should be uh, aspiring to a view from nowhere. Um, now, this might seem a rather uh, uh, obscure question, but uh, the question of what theory of personal identity uh, any future superintelligence uh, might have uh, uh, matters. It's a question of retarded maturation versus acceler accelerated maturation. Um, uh, we wouldn't normally think of ourselves as baby killers, but nonetheless we do aim to replace uh, babies with adult humans. Uh, and it's worth considering the question of, of, of what might a benevolent superintelligence uh, wish to uh, replace uh, uh, pain racked discontented uh, human beings with. Now, okay, what's the ultimate uh, evolutionary origins of unfriendliness in organic robots? Um, I won't attempt here to give a, uh, a potted history of life, but of the, the bulleted points there, uh, one that is actually quite crucial is, is sexual reproduction. Um, because we're not uh, genetically identical clones, our uh, interests uh, genetically uh, uh, quite frequently uh, conflict. Um, quite what uh, life would be like, social life would be like, if we really uh, were 100% ide uh, genetically identical. It's, it's hard to imagine we'd probably love each other as much as we love ourselves. Um, but that's uh, 